three Stuart steam plants, the 504 boiler air test, part 25. The assembled refurbished 504 boiler was previously given a hydraulic test to twice working pressure which was 120 pounds per square inch. This is a compressed air test to a working pressure of 60 pounds per square inch. This clip shows the boiler with an airline fitted to the check valve. My usual airline feed to the bench for normal applications is a piece of thick walled silicone rubber tubing. However, to fit this blue silicone rubber tubing to the check valve, I do need a larger spring clip. I fitted this in due course. What I'm doing here is checking the tightness of various union nuts. Here I'm looking at the pressure gauge, and this I nipped up very, very slightly. Warning, warning, warning. Do not over tighten these small fittings. Recently, more than normal, I've had communications from people who have got problems with their steam engines, all caused by being too heavy handed. And this applies to people who work on full size steam engines. If you work on a full size steam engine, that is one thing. If you are working on a miniature steam engine, put miniature scale pressure on all the parts. Do not over torque everything, otherwise, they break. And that's it, no more warnings in this episode. To the people who break their engines, I know who you are. It's never good to be heavy handed when playing with miniature steam engines. This clip shows the second clip for fixing the silicone rubber tubing to the check valve. This is a larger diameter heavy duty clip and it fits around the fitting. Here you can clearly see that on the gauge it's showing 60 pounds per square inch. The safety valve needs adjusting because it should be blowing off at this pressure. In actual fact, the ball was stuck inside the safety valve because on this type of safety valve you can't lift the top part to take the pressure off the ball. As soon as I started turning the top part of the valve, it freed the ball and it blew off. But at 40 pounds per square inch, I adjusted the valve so it blew off at 60 pounds per square inch, which it's supposed to. And as usual with Stuart safety valves, it makes that horrible noise. There's nothing you can do about this, it's the way it is. Very rarely you can be lucky and get a silent one, but there are very few and far between. Here I'm generally checking the tightness of the fittings, including the nuts on the water gauge, and it's really important not to over tighten these. I'm even checking the tightness of the very small nuts at the front of the check valves to make sure that they're not leaking. And the spanner I'm using for this job is far too big, but it is all relative to the amount of pressure that you put on it. I did not shear off any of the fittings using my small 4 inch barco spanner. How do you check for leaks using compressed air? It's easy using steam because you can see that actually leaking, but compressed air is a little bit more difficult. What you do is you put your hand near the boiler and you should be able to feel the draft from the air leaking from the boiler. Here I'm testing the effectiveness of the globe valve and everything's okay there. In this installation, the globe valve needs to face in the opposite direction. So that's a simple job. Unscrew the valve, fit a couple of shim washers, do a test fit until it's in the right position, then apply some Loctite 542 and tighten everything up. And guess what? Once again, do not over tighten the parts. If you do, they will break. Now it's time to fit the union nut and union cone to the check valve. That seems okay, but the actual check valve itself is not quite in the right position. Once again, using my Barco spanner, I can move it into the right position, but it's better to remove it first, apply a little more Loctite 542, and then screw it back into the correct position. You have to be economic with this Loctite 542. In certain areas, if you apply too much, for instance, anywhere near the banjo union for the pressure gauge, you will block up the holes and then it won't work. Miniature steam engines need miniature applications of sealant. This is the baseboard pattern for the Stuart Victoria steam plant. What I need to do now is position the steam plant components on this board before marking out and drilling holes through the board. Then I will clamp the board with all the holes drilled in the right place to the main baseboards which are made from oak and finally bolt everything into position on the really nice baseboards.
You don't have to do it this way. In fact, I seldom do it this way. I go straight onto the baseboards. But if you're a beginner and making a steam plant, this is a great way to do it. Use a sacrificial baseboard first. If you make any mistakes during the marking out or drilling of these sacrificial baseboards, it's no big deal. You just block up the hole or put a cross against it and drill the hole in the right place. Here I'm fitting the gas tank pipe. Because in the next episode, I will be giving this 504 boiler a steam test. Here you see the arrangement of the gas pipe, and the gas tank is quite a long way from the boiler, which is where it needs to be. When I turn the plant around, you can see the general layout. It's really going to look good. But that's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.